الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا uh, الحمد لله uh, we have start, started this uh, lecture series uh, every friday in islamabad and um, the people uh, who want to participate in this uh, lecture series can uh, are joining uh, through our joining uh, form and if any one of you who would watch this lecture later online would uh, they can uh, follow this link that is that you can see on your screen that is awasnasir.com/join so uh, in this series of uh, lectures the first one was uh, what are the five w's of imam al mahdi when where what everything uh, we discussed in the first one and the second one uh, with allah's mercy alhamdulillah we were able to uh, get an approximate uh, calculation of the events coming forth and the series of events from today until none of us would be alive and uh, to our surprise uh, we we got to know that in 20 years from now none of us would be alive wallahu a'lam bi sawab but according to what we have read and learned from uh, the authentic ahadith and according to the geopolitical events we are going through uh, none of us would most probably be alive by 2044 or even before wallahu a'lamu bisawab having said that uh, today we are going to put some attention Today we are going to request the Muslim Ummah and make everyone ponder upon a very crucial point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done over and over and over again. I want all of you to to ponder on the point that imagine imagine the day when young Maryam alayhi salam Mary as the western people know her was alone in her room in her prayer room and she was told that she is going to hold a child without a man a child she would bear a child without a father and even moving to the next level next point when she actually had the child in her abdomen and finally, young Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, was finally born. Imagine the loneliness he must be facing at that point. Something that had never happened in the past. Something that never happened after that. Jesus alayhi salatu was salam was the last prophet that was born in Bani Israel. Isa alayhi salam was born in Bani Israel and he was the last prophet who appeared in Bani Israel. After that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born in Bani Ismail. So young Isa alayhi salam was born without a father. 
can you imagine the gravity of the situation over there the pressure on that woman she was the only one in the whole earth among all of the mankind and probably the jinn kind as well she was the only one who knew the fact that this child is going to be born and eventually she gave birth to the child without a man can you imagine can you imagine the situation over there she was the only one in the whole wide earth from all of the mankind who knew for the fact that she was pure a man never touched her but still a child was born to her why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried bani israel with such a trial that a child was born without a father a miracle that had never happened and the miracle that would never happen why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give such a trial to bani israel and as we all we can all of us can imagine it happened that had to happen the people of bani israel the people at the time of isa alayhi salam and maryam alayhi salatu was salam obviously blamed her for the wrongdoing they blamed her they put a bohtan on her, on maryam alayhi salatu was salam which which is what what would any of us had done in such a situation what would have any of us done how could anyone imagine that a child can can come to life without a man without a father that's impossible so so they they blamed maryam that she had done something wrong which makes sense doesn't it it does make sense anyone would say that but it was a trial who would pass that trial who would pass such a trial that you see something that is obviously wrong you see something that is very obvious and it doesn't fit your brain it doesn't fit what we have already seen it doesn't fit our stereotypes it is against the laws it is against science it is against the norms and it is even against the religion and it is even against the laws of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously everyone would reject everyone would blame the woman everyone would say that nauzubillah the woman did something wrong that's why the child is here nauzubillah allah created such a trial on purpose what is that purpose we have studied seven rules of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this was to grab your attention i would come to the explanation that why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that we will explain that in a moment but first we we need to learn seven rules of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah has some rules according to which allah raises a nation or allah drops a nation from from glory this happens and allah gives the the ruling of the earth to to the people allah puts a nation as as his favorite nation and allah drops a nation from the from the place of a favorite nation because of some rules allah raises nations 
and Allah makes the nations fall because of some rules. And these are seven rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah explained in Quran. We would quickly walk through these seven rules, then we would be able to understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put such a huge trial that everyone would obviously fail. And then how and which people would pass that trial? So first rule is whatever, whatever falls upon you, whatever the situation you are facing, whatever the trial or tribulation you are going through is because of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in Surah Shura, ayah number 30. That وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ بِمُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ You earn your trials, you earn your problems. You do it yourself. That's the first one. Second one is, now the point is everyone would ask that why? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send all of the trials and tribulations on the Muslims mostly? Why are the Muslims always the oppressed ones? Why are the people in the West? are always progressing why have why do they have technological revolution material revolution now allah explains this in the second rule second rule of allah is in surah to zukhruf ayah number 33 and 35 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that if it was not expected from the people that everyone would become a kafir everyone would become infidel everyone would stray away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path then Allah would have made the stairs and the houses and the roofs and the living places of kuffar the infidels with gold and silver surah to zukhra ayah number 33 and 35 Allah has no Allah gives no value to this material success that you see in this world and Allah says I would have given all this material even more to the kafirs but I have not given as a mercy to the Muslims because then Muslims all of the Muslims would also become infidels when they would see the staircases and the roofs and the doors of kafirs made with gold and silver so Allah is not giving them even further because it's a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us this also sometimes get trials they also have uh, hard times and so on so this is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this material success is for the non-muslims this material success is majorly for the ones who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah can give that to Muslims as well. But Allah, this material success holds no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the trials are mostly on the Muslims and the material success is only uh, mostly to the people who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mostly I'm saying this is uh, majorly what happens. So first rule every trial and tribulation and and problem that we face in our life is because of our own deeds second one is that mostly falls on muslims because material success material problems bring you to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it makes you cure yourself third one is when this is now to the nations the first one is mostly individual level second one is we are slowly moving from an in individual level to the, to the level of uh, tribes and nations. So the third one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps sending the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps sending his people for the correction of a nation. And the first prophet was Adam alayhi salam and so on and so forth every nation has had prophets from time to time but after some time after some time the situation of a nation becomes that 
they start to stray away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After every prophet, there comes a time when the whole nation is rejected or neglected for so long. For example, at the time of Yusuf alayhi salam, he was a prophet, his father was a prophet and his uh, grandfather was a prophet. But there was a huge gap between Yusuf alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam. A nation was neglected for so long. Similarly, between Ismail alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a long hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years. There's a, there was a distance. So the nation was neglected for so long. When such a thing happens, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when such an, a thing happens that a nation is neglected for so long, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure sends someone, sends someone to cure the nation, to fix the nation, to bring the nation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third rule is when a nation is neglected for so long, finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure sends someone for to, to cure the nation, to cure the nation. And the fourth one is when that is the point you would understand. This fourth point will make you understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what was the question? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Isa alayhi salam in such a way that it was an unexpected, impossible trial. Impossible trial. I would say that again. It was an impossible to pass trial. Impossible. Everyone would reject that. So this is the point. That is the fourth one. The unexpected trial happens to the nation. Unexpected trial happens to the nation when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends someone to fix the nation. It always happens. Most of the times. An unexpected trial happens. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Starting from, let's take a few examples. For example, uh, Talut alayhi salam. When Bani Israel was finally ready to fight for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a leader who would lead them in war, in a battle. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an unexpected trial. They were expecting someone rich. They were expecting a leader of a tribe. They were expecting a warrior. They were expecting something of their own stereotypes, something that they already think is big and right and strong and according to the norms and according to the fashion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a villager, a young man from a village who hardly anyone knew. And Allah told them that he would be your leader in war. And they raised this objection. They wanted to reject him as a leader but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained that he is better than you in ilmi wal jism he is better than you in knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah has taught him special things and he is also stronger than most of you or maybe all of them and he knew how to lead a nation Allah selected Talut and same thing happened within the battle the Talut and Jalut was fighting they thought Allah subhanahu wa again something very un unexpected. They thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Talut from out of the blue. And they thought some miracle would happen and Talut would kill Jalut and we would win. But Talut did not kill Jalut. Again something unexpected happened. What was that? A normal shepherd boy who was passing by the battlefield, who was, who was just minding his own business. He saw the two armies fighting. And out of nowhere he did, he sent his boomerang. He threw his slingshot or boomerang or something. And out of nowhere he killed Jalut in a single shot. 
the huge Jalut who the uh, Jalut who was a fighter who was a who was a tribesman or what not. He was killed by a shepherd. And who was that shepherd? Who was that shepherd? Talut. Talut. Talut was leading the army. He was fighting. A shepherd was minding his own business. He was passing by. Unexpected trial. The shepherd was Dawood salam. Now they were not expecting a prophet to come in the form of shepherd. They, once Talut was made leader, they had finally accepted. But then Allah put another trial that a prophet came in the form of a shepherd. Unexpected trial. And then look, now they have built a practice. Now they know, okay, we somewhat understand somewhat understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on sending prophets uh, out of the unexpected, out of the blue. Allah keeps on sending his people or leadership or whatever out of the blue, unexpected. Talut and Dawood. Talut came as a poor villager. Dawood came as a poor shepherd. Then unexpected trial. Guess what? Next one, they must have expected somebody again coming from the out of the blue. See, they have, they have learned this. Okay, okay, we would expect someone, the next prophet or next leader to come out of the blue or as a shepherd or as a poor man, what happens? Again, unexpected trial. Unexpected trial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the son of Dawood the king, Solomon. Dawood becomes the leader. Dawood becomes King David. Now they are expecting somebody out of the blue, somebody out of a village, somebody a shepherd, somebody. But Allah gave an unexpected trial once again. Let me repeat. King Solomon, son of Dawood was made the king in the next prophet. Unexpected trial. So this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to filter the people. To filter. To filter the ones chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To filter the pure hearted ones from the munafiqin, from the contaminated ones. This is Allah's choice. Allah keeps on doing that over and over and over and over again. What happened? Another example. Now, for years, for ages, for centuries, for centuries, Bani Israel got used to the fact that Anni Fazal Tukumal al Alameen, Allah has chosen them. Allah had told them, You are the chosen one. Allah told them. Told them. Not only Allah behaved. Like that, but also told them that you are the expect, you are the better ones, you are the selected ones. You are given preference to everyone alameen, over jinns, over angels, over humans, over animals, over everything. Now they are used to. That after Yusuf salam, after Ishaq salam, after Yaqub salam, so on and so forth, hundreds, maybe thousands, or we don't know, maybe more. Prophets came within Bani Israel. No prophet came outside of Bani Israel since Hazrat Yaqub salam, Hazrat Ishaq salam, after Hazrat Ibrahim salam actually. Ismail salam, was also a prophet, but only him. But after Is Ishaq, salam, Yaqub, salam, Yusuf, salam, after that, all of the prophets, Musa, salam, Dawood, salam, um, Suleiman, salam, all of the prophets, hundreds, maybe thousands of prophets, even more, came within Bani Israel. So it was Allah's promise with Ibrahim salam, that I have written Nabuwa and Risala within you. I have written the Nabuwa and Risala 
in your children. So they were used, Bani Israel was, and the world was, you can say. The whole universe was used to the fact that all of the prophets are coming within Bani Israel. So they could assume that the, this promise that was made with Ibrahim is actually with Bani, Isma, uh, Bani Israel, with the sons of Israel. But what happened? Allah says in Quran that we have written in Zabur as well. Zabur was on revealed on Dawood And it was written in Zabur. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Allah says in Quran that we wrote in Zabur that we will give the kingdom, leadership of the whole world to the, to the pure people, to the right doers, to the sincere slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they were expecting, they were expecting global leadership. And it was written in their books and it was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the final prophet would come who would give, who would bring Allah's leadership to the whole earth. So they were obviously expecting because they were anni fazaltukum ala alameen. Allah told them that you are the best ones. So they were obviously expecting the final prophet to come within them as well. So again, unexpected trial. You see where I'm coming from? Again, very unexpected trial. Allah says, Ibadi as salihun. The righteous people, not Bani Israel. And they were assuming that we are the righteous people, which they were not. They tried to kill Isa as well. They killed Yahya alayhi salam, they killed many prophets. Na'udhu billah. So Allah sent the final prophet from Bani Ismail, which was, which they were never expecting. Unexpected trial. And they thought they had the knowledge. They had ulama. They had prayer places. They had a whole series of ilm knowledge coming from top to the bottom. They were they were the followers of the prophets. They were the followers and bearers of knowledge of all of the prophets that came within Bani Israel. Why? So they, they thought, obviously, that the final prophet has to come within Bani within Bani Israel. Israel because they have the knowledge, they have the prophets, they have the books, they have the treasures and they are the promised ones. There was no, no chance they could expect the final prophet to come from a place that those were called Ummis, the ones who could, who had nothing to do with the knowledge. They had nothing to do with reading and writing. And even within them, the one who couldn't even read his own name once, it was, it was to point Muhammad Rasulullah in a document. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa could not find in the document where Muhammad Rasulullah was written. They could not expect. They could not expect. They could not even their wildest dreams expect that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final prophet and ummi, could be the final prophet and it could appear in the land of camels. The back, most backward land in the whole earth at that time. So it was unexpected trial. Unexpected trial. This is sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Isa alayhi salam was sent in an extreme unexpected way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let the whole nation Bani Israel reject the final prophet and Allah let only the ones Allah wanted to know that he is a prophet. The only the purest ones, the pure ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is not by their, they, they didn't earn this purity. Allah, Allah makes pure. 
anyone who wants. And even the ones who are not pure Allah, Allah can choose anyone to, to, uh, uh, for Hidayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this unexpected trial and then Allah chose who would be able to recognize this as a prophet and most of the people would reject Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave another miracle that Isa alayhi salam while being the newborn baby spoke. That was a miracle. And that was the reason. If you could find something in there, the truth in there, you have the small pinhole over there. Small pinhole over there. Go recognize the truth. Go let all of your filth go away. Let all of your, all of your expectations go away and see the truth from that pinhole and that this child is speaking if you have the craving for the truth the best you can do is the only thing you can do is prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah tell me what's the matter Allah listens to the prayers oh Allah tell me what's the matter this woman has given birth to a child without a father or this woman is wrong. This child is speaking. Is this magic? Voodoo? Black magic? Or this is a miracle? This is very simple. Go pray straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him. And whoever would have done that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, Okay, you are being picked to support this prophet. And now coming to the final point. We have covered four points. And um, uh, a few things three more points we have seven points uh, the fifth one is that when such a thing happens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures wants to cure the nation Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent in Bani Ismail Bani Ismail had to be made the leaders Kuntum now Bani Israel is rejected bi bin Allah. rejected just like just like Satan just like Shaitan Shaitan was rejected then Bani Israel was rejected Again, history is repeating itself. Satan was very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very pious, very selected one, but rejected. Rejected. A shaitan a rajim. He, he becomes a rajim. So then, same thing happens with Bani Israel. The best ones, selected ones, but they keep on rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep on denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs, keep on denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message and ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected them. وَبَاعُوا بِغَضَبْ لِمِنَ اللَّهِ Bani Bani Israel rejected as well. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the final prophet in Bani Ismail. When Allah sends a leader or the one who, who has to cure the nation, a prophet or anyone, anyone, a scholar, a leader or anything. Talut was not a prophet. So he was a leader. They could be a scholars. Anyways, so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the fifth point. Fifth rule. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures the nation by force. All are rejected. Now you have to lead. The nation overall would be cured. But the ones who choose to oppose the prophet, oppose the leader, oppose the, oppose the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be, would become Abu Lahab. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wishing the worst for a person who rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah. The ones who would reject would become Abu Jahl. The ones who reject would become such worse people. But the ones within, from within that nation would be, who choose to support the messenger, who choose to support the appointee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, become Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. Now become Become the companions of Isa alayhi salam. Become Umar radiallahu ta'ala. No, become Abu Huraira. Become Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala. No, become Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. No, become Khadija radiallahu ta'ala. No, so on and so forth. But Allah cures the nation by force. Allah keeps on sending trials, tribulations. Just like we, we discussed in the first point. That because of their sins and because they are not coming to the cure, Allah keeps on sending trials and tribulations. So Allah cures them by force like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured the people of Makkah. Although they rejected all of them, most of them. But Allah cured 
people of Makkah by force. Initially, the same thing happened with Bani Israel. They, they were prostrating to, to a calf. They, were, they, have, they have made an idol of, uh, out of uh, gold and silver and so on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured them by force. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept on curing them by force. Same thing happened with people of Makkah that they finally became uh, the leader of the Ummah, leader of the world. So Allah uh, keeps on curing and that is Allah explained in Surah Al-Sajda, ayah number 21 that Allah would send a small tribulation, small adab before the bigger one, maybe the people cure themselves, maybe people choose the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe people uh, uh, come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, this is what happened with people of Makkah as well. So uh, the sixth one is after that it becomes two poles, two powerful poles. The people who are with the messenger after extreme neg negligence Allah has sent a messenger. Messenger comes with an un unexpected trial. Then with the messenger it becomes two poles. The people who oppose the messenger and the people who are with the messenger and it becomes two extreme forces. Two extreme forces. The power of Haq and the power of Batil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah number 16 to 18 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smashes Haq on Batil and the finally Batil is finished, vanished, completely vanished. This is what happens after a messenger comes and the seventh one is now we would go back to point number one again it becomes a cycle the seventh one is when the time keeps on going time keeps on going time keeps on going the nation becomes far from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like just like the people after Yusuf alayhi salam became the slaves of uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, and they were the they were very far from Allah's message. They, that they, um, the Samri magician created a calf, and they started prostrating and made them their god. Nozu Billahi min zalik. So Allah cured, sent a messenger, and Allah cured them by force. But when this keeps on happening, keeps on happening, keeps on happening, then this comes unexpected trial plus this rule what is this rule that Allah says that Allah will if you do not follow Allah's words then Allah would change you with another nation and that new nation would not be like you that is Surah Al-Muhammad ayah number 38 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Iblis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Iblis the chosen one, the pious one, but finally when he did the kabur, Allah rejected him. And then after jinns, humans came. In humans, let's come to straight to Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Bani Israel the fazal to kumal al alamin. But when they did not when they didn't listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they didn't follow the wahi, they didn't follow the messengers, they wanted to kill the messengers, and it, a lot of time after a lot of time and enough uh, enough space was given to them finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also rejected them first Allah rejected the jinns and changed them with humans then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected Bani Israel and changed them with Bani Ismail and similar thing now it would go on until Qiyamah and when Bani, not all Bani Ismail, when the people of Arab, the Arabs, it's clear from Quran, it is clear from history that Allah has to change the nation with a new one. When the people of Makkah have started, the people of Arab have started to build mandirs, idol worship homes in the land of Arab when the people of Arabia have started to hold concerts and music events and all of the fuhush and all of the worst things 
in the land of Arab, the pure land of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they have dis dismantled the Khilafa, the one rule, the one leadership of um, Muslims uh, that that was at the time of Sultanatul Usmania and the other one over here uh, at the time of uh, Sultanatul Mughalia. So they they rebelled against their own Khilafa or kingdom, whatever you can say, and they helped dismantle it. And they did so many wrong things that we just discussed. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has to change them with a new nation. And that is going to happen just like it happened at the play uh, in, in Mecca that they had, they were the idol worshippers. They had put the idols within the Kaabatullah. Now this has to happen again in the, at a place where the, the people were worshipping the idols. Obviously, just like Bani Israel, Arabs cannot expect. Arabs think that we are the Khadumain al Haramain al Sharifain. We have Masjid al Nabi. We have Kaabatullah. We are the followers of the true deen. They think they cannot expect. The people who were the worshippers of idols, the third world people, the poor people, can be the bearers of the next leadership sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot expect. But this is rule number seven that Allah has changed the nation with another one. And this is another rule number four as well that this is unexpected trial as well just like Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came in Bani Ismail instead of Bani Israel just like Isa alayhi salam was born without a father just like Talut alayhi salam came as a poor man instead of a lead, tribesman or a leader just like Dawood alayhi salam came as a shepherd instead of a leader just like Suleiman alayhi salam when they were expecting uh, to come as a poor man came as a son of uh, the king Similarly, this is the unexpected trial as well that Imam al-Mahdi has come from the people of Pakistan, from a land that, had, that was detached from the idol worshippers, from Madinatul Sani, just like Madinatul Munawwara was detached, separated from uh, Makatul Mukarrama. This is again a very 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 unexpected trial how can you expect a clean shaved man when you think that the scholars have beards the scholars have caps or or what do you call them Turban. huh? Turban. turbans and rumal or whatever when you think the scholars are, have studied degrees from Medina universities, when you think the scholars are qualified from Deoband, when you think the scholars are qualified from uh, Jamia to Salafi and so on and so forth, and when you think the bearer of, bearer of Deen can only be the ones who have the titles with them, Hazrat, Maulana, Sheikh, Doctor, so on and so forth, Madazallahu Ali and what not. How can you expect a man wearing western dress, clean shaved, never gone to a religious school, sometimes misses prayers as well, and born in a normal household, how can you expect him to be Imam al-Mahdi? Nobody can. I agree. I agree that this is such an unexpected trial, nobody would be able to pass except the ones who prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance in this matter and the people who would start speaking rubbish instantly without thinking or the people who choose the material benefits or the people who whose pure and intention is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy will not be able to recognize this unexpected trial and also this brings us to other points as well that this this came after extreme negligence that no prophet has come in any known history in this region and this brings us to the other rules as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix this nation by force all of the trials would come 
Either it's the trial of economy, either it is the trial of uh, floods, either it is the trial of um, earthquakes, either it is the trial of storms, either it is the trials of uh, viruses and uh, viral infections and so on. Everything would fall upon this nation, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would fix this nation by force and two powerful poles would be created. The people who, who deny Imam al-Mahdi would be like Abu Lahab, and Abu Jahl and the people who support and, uh, and, and be with Imam al-Mahdi would be the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would make the leaders of the world Now this is the Prophet, uh, this is the promise just like it was the promise uh, to Bani Israel that Allah will give the leadership of the world of the earth to the pious people and this, these pious people would obviously be from the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the promise that was written وَلَقَدْ قَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الزِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا مِنْ عِبَادِي الصَّالِحُونَ that the promise which was written in Zabur is finally being fulfilled within, within the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this would create two powerful force one is Imam al-Mahdi and the other is the people who are rejected. They still want the leadership of the world. What? How? They, still, they are still there. They, they, also, they also claim that we are the are the are the Yarisun al Now Allah would send a Dajjal, a leader. Just like the rejected one became the flag bearer of evil. The first rejected one was. Iblis, he became the flag bearer of evil from that day until Qiyamah for everyone. Same. Bani Israel is rejected. Now they are becoming the flag bearers of evil. They would follow under a leader that is the Jal anti Christ. And they would also want crave the leadership of the world. And two powerful forces would be created. On one side, that is Imam al-Mahdi with Allah's mercy and Allah's guidance and Allah's power and everything. And the, on the other side, that is the Jal, Antichrist, and Antichrist would had all of the would have all of the powers of the material and all of the evil forces and Satan and Iblis, everyone and voodoo, magic, everything, technology with him. And Allah would make these two forces clash. And like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. In Surah Al Anbiya, number 16 to 18, and that is our rule number 6, that the Haq smashes Batil so much so that the Batil vanishes, then the whole earth would be filled with justice and mercy, and every household on earth would have Allah's name uh, in it, and the earth would and make all of his uh, all his treasures pop out all of the crops would grow very well all of the sh uh, sky would shower all of the rains and everyone would be happy and the whole earth would be filled with mercy and that promise the purpose that Allah created the mankind for would finally be fulfilled under the leadership of Imam al-Mahdi with Allah's special mercy and inshallah we we are the ones the ones among us who would be alive by then would see that that is coming very soon within four or five years from now. Wallahu a'lamu bis sawab. Aqulu quli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sali al muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat. Allahumma rin al haqqa haqqa wa rzukna tiba'ah wa rin al batila batila wa rzukna tinaba wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad.